Good evening. Attorney General Edwin Meese is calling it the largest international drug case ever developed by the Department of Justice. More than 200 people have been charged in Italy and here in the United States with smuggling heroin into this country. While announcing the drug arrest today, Meese refused to answer questions about the growing calls for his resignation. We'll have more on Meese's troubles in just a moment. First, CNN's John Holloman reports on an alleged heroin ring that came undone. Most of the 69 U.S. arrests came in New York, but the officials say the heroin ring was spread throughout the country. Arrests are being made in Boston, Charlotte, Cleveland, Los Angeles, Washington, and San Juan, Puerto Rico. 164 more were arrested in Italy. It is the largest international drug case ever developed by the Department of Justice. The two-year investigation was started as a result of the 1985 Pizza Connection case, which found what Meese calls a well-organized mafia heroin distribution network headquartered in New York. FBI undercover agents came across a Sicilian mafia plan that involved the export of cocaine from the U.S. to Italy. Now, this is kind of an interesting wrinkle. The export of cocaine from the United States to Italy where it would be exchanged for heroin that would then be smuggled back into the United States. Mies says it's impossible to say what effect this latest bust will have on drug sales on the street. Nobody knows for sure the quantity of heroin or any other drug coming into the United States. The new FBI strategy of penetrating and engaging in long-term investigations uh, is what makes this so significant because it's part of that strategy which is going after the heart of the drug trafficking networks rather than just uh, chopping off uh, the tentacles. Despite their success in cutting the heroin flow from Italy, these arrests only serve to highlight another problem. The U.S. is rapidly becoming the world's drug clearinghouse. There's so much cheap cocaine coming into the United States, dealers are moving it to Europe and making a 300 percent profit. John Holloman, CNN at the Justice Department in Washington. Both John, Joe and John Gambino were wanted fugitives, wanted by the FBI in New York. They failed to appear. They've been released on bond previously for $5 million facing racketeering, cocaine, heroin, drug trafficking charges, as well as conspiracy to commit murder and that they conspired to murder a Sicilian prosecutor in Palermo, Sicily. They're also involved in conspiracy to murder individuals in the United States. With the failure to appear, there was an international manhunt launched by the FBI in New York, which led to Sicily, Italy, South America, and eventually to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Information was developed by the New York FBI office, by the Metropolitan Intelligence Unit here in Broward County, as well as the FBI, which led to the South Haven Apartments last night at around quarter to 12, when detectives from MIU and FBI agents announced themselves to the two fugitives. They failed to heed to the announcement. Sledgehammers were used to break into the apartment, which was apartment 14 at that location. They both surrendered at that point without resistance. They were not armed. Um, John Gambino, though, at that time claimed to be ill. He had a previous medical condition. Paramedics were called to the scene, and he was checked at the scene and was determined he should be taken to a local hospital. He's presently at that hospital now under 24-hour FBI guard. Uh, Joe Gambino has had a hearing this morning before U.S. Magistrate Lorana Snow, who ha he has admitted his identity. He's waived his right for a removal hearing. He's being held without bond and will be taken back to New York City to face the U.S. District Court Judge Day.
know, of course, Mr. Giuliani, the United States Attorney from the Southern District of New York. Also with me is Dr. Guterri from the Italian National Police and Major DeRosa from the Guardia di Fanonca. We're announcing today the arrest in New York City of 17 individuals and charges in the United States and in Italy of over 200 individuals for drug-related violations. In the United States, 75 have been charged, 52 have thus far been arrested. In New York City, 17 have thus far been arrested. We are still looking for an additional 11 subjects. This was a drug ring, primarily a heroin drug ring. The heroin was coming from Italy to the United States in two principal forms. It was secreted in wine bottles. It was also taped to the bodies of young females who were flying from Italy to the United States. The principals that we arrested today are members of the Sicilian Gambino faction. We also arrested one retired New York City police officer. As in, as in past cases, this group referred to the narcotics in an open code, referring to it as both furniture and men's clothing. Much of the activity centered at the Cafe Giardino and the Bensonhurst section of Brooklyn. The owners of the Cafe Giardino, in an attempt to safeguard their security, took extensive electronic countermeasures, sweeping the cafe on a weekly basis. Nevertheless, we did manage to penetrate the cafe <coughs> with electronic devices. The arrests began at 1.45 this morning. Ten of the subjects were partying at the Cafe Giardino. Coincidentally, as our agents entered the cafe, the entertainment had just ended. So as we broke in, applause broke out. There were <coughs> the individuals who were arrested made some effort to escape. An agent went to the microphone and said, in effect, many of you have had your last dance. We're the FBI. You're under arrest. We took the 10 into custody without incident. Some of those who were not arrested were still not sure what was going on. In fact, thought it was perhaps uh, part of the uh, entertainment or a gag. In the arrests, we recovered small quantities of drugs, large amounts of cash, guns, automobiles, and we will be taping, taking steps in the immediate future to seize and forfeit to the United States government large amounts of property. That was basically the story of the arrest. I'll ask Mr. Giuliani to describe the legal case to you. Thank you very much, Jim. I would like to, uh, first of all, uh, congratulate the uh, Federal Bureau of Investigation for conducting this investigation. This is a nationwide investigation, and also congratulate the Italian authorities who uh, coordinated this investigation with the FBI and with the Department of Justice. This was, an, in essence, an international operation that worked very smoothly and very well, and uh, it really is an example, another example, and the latest one of uh, the cooperation between the Italian government and the United States government, and what we can achieve in trying to reduce this uh, terrible problem of, uh, of drugs for both countries, the United States and Italy. The uh, charges and the arrests are the result of more than a year-long investigation conducted by the FBI and the United States Attorney's Offices uh, under the auspices of the President's Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force. The investigative efforts uh, centered on the Cafe Giardino in Brooklyn, which the complaint alleges is a headquarters for drug trafficking, loan sharking, gambling, and other criminal activities carried out under the aegis of an organized crime faction of the Gambi uh, Gambino La Casa Nostra family. The complaint further alleges that this crime faction operated on 18th Avenue in Brooklyn. It is alleged that the group of La Casa Nostra members and associates imported heroin and cocaine into the United States, oversaw its distribution in several major cities in the United States, and reaped enormous profits. In the Italian operation, 133 individuals were charged with the narcotics violations and numerous searches and arrests were conducted. FBI undercover agents and, unidenti and unidentified informants working independently from different locations in the United States 
as alleged in the complaint, purchased quantities of heroin and cocaine from several defendants in the case. Court authorized wiretaps and other electronic surveillance methods were also used in the case by which conversations of the members of the conspiracy discussing the importation of heroin and cocaine were recorded. Each of the defendants named in today's complaint is charged with conspiracy to distribute and possess with intent to distribute kilogram quantities of heroin and cocaine, which, if convicted, carry maximum penalties of life imprisonment and up to $4 million in fines. As Mr. Fox also noted, the, uh, th this kind of uh, narcotics conspiracy case can also involve the forfeiture of huge amounts of property and money. And from our point of view, that is just as important a part of the case as the actual criminal conviction, because it at, at once permits us to reduce the size of these organizations by depleting them of their real power, their financial base, and it provides for law enforcement and for the government resources to continue to wage this effort against, uh, against drugs. It is very, very appropriate to have the money that is needed to reduce this drug problem taken out of the hands of the drug dealers and drug profiteers who are now possessing that money and that property. But let me also emphasize that this case is an example of uh, the Mafia and La Casa Nostra's alleged uh, entry into the cocaine operations. We've had other cases before where there was cocaine involved, but this is a case in which uh, there were importations and distributions of cocaine, and a case in which cocaine was being exchanged for heroin. Cocaine being sent over to Italy, heroin being sent to the United States. Um, and that's another phenomenon which is something that is of great concern, not only to the American authorities, but to the Italian authorities. Now let me uh, close by once again uh, reiterating my appreciation and congratulations to the FBI and to the Italian authorities and also to Andy McCarthy, who is the assistant U.S. attorney who has been in charge of this case, and to Louis Free, who is the chief of our organized crime section in the United States Attorney's Office, who have over overseen many aspects of the case. Rudy, how does this compare, two questions, how does this compare to, say, the Pizza Connection case, which a lot of these cases are, are used to compare it to? And how come John Gotti's name isn't on this list? Uh, as to the second part of that, I, I can't comment on, on the names of people who are not on this list. There are a lot of names that aren't on but he on this list, family. and there's nothing I can say about that. All I have to say is no comment about. I can comment on the people who are named and what the allegations are against them. I can't comment on anyone that may that is not named. Uh, insofar as comparisons to other other cases, uh, I think this case you know stands on its own. It's a major uh, case. It's allegations, not proof. All of these people are presumed innocent. Um, however, uh, looking at the allegations, this reveals a major international narcotics uh, conspiracy involving both heroin and cocaine. These people are alleged to be members of uh, the organized crime family. Uh, so it's a very, very significant case. Well, follow up then with the question. It seems then as if after the pizza connection of convictions, as if other fact factions just picked up the ball and continue to do business as usual. The effort against drugs is not uh, one that is uh, you're, gonna, you're going to end by convicting one group of people or another group of people. Uh, sometimes in describing it, uh, people can oversimplify it. You know, there's this whole issue of how much, how much of the control of heroin has now moved over to Asian groups. Some of it has, some of it hasn't. It's a diverse business. There are a lot of people involved. The, the thing that I think this case says is that the Justice Department, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Italian authorities are committed to continuing to pursue uh, drug operations that involve Italian and American elements together. And this is a model for how to do things. Can you ask I think how the question whether or not this sense? has been going on, this group has been operating for an extended period of time. Is there a reason to believe they started up in the last two years? Just how much narcotics are we speaking? I, I don't know that I can go into detail on that, except to say that this is not, uh, these are not newcomers. Uh, new fights, as alleged in the, in the complaint. Mr. Fox, can you give us a kind of dollars and cents sense of the multi-kilogram quantities of heroin and cocaine involved in this? I don't think we can do so accurately. They were selling kilos of heroin for approximately $200,000 a kilo. They were trading in multi-kilo quantities, so it's millions and millions of dollars. Uh, I think you need to be cautious when you describe these people as Sicilian Gambino faction 
uh, we do not consider them actually made members or associates of the LCN Gambino family. And if some of you want to pursue those, the niceties of that difference, Jules Bonavolanta is here. You could get him afterwards. He runs all of our organized crime operations. But <clears throat> these are not, you know, so-called made guys of the Gambino family. What about the relationship, say, of uh, Giovanni Giuseppe Rosario Gambino to Carlo? There is a blood relationship. Is it uh, nephew? Nephews? Yes. Are they in custody? Yes, they are. What, uh, if any, is uh, are the links of this group to the uh, defendants and the pizza connection? And is this? Can you say that this investigation is a uh, an offshoot of the uh, pizza? I can't. Uh, I can't comment on. Uh, on the pizza connection case or make connections to that case. That aspects of that case are still pending before the court, so it would be inappropriate for us to comment on uh, on connections or talk about uh, uh, that case. Well, you said that, that, that they're not uh, made members of the Gambino family. Does that mean that the family, was this was not sanctioned by the family, or was this a family operation that used non-made members one of the one of at least one of the individuals is alleged to be a member of the Gambino uh, crime family uh, the others are alleged to be members of the Sicilian uh, families or some of them are and some are alleged to be associates but I don't think we can go beyond, I don't, we, we can't go beyond that and say whether they're sanctioned or not sanctioned well mr. Fox what was the uh, entertainment that was going on that you uh, your agents interrupted <laughs> yeah. and was what a, was the name of the agent who stepped up to the microphone it was a very popular Italian singer, I believe, that was entertaining. You don't know his name. And I don't know his name, and uh, we, I don't think we were, we aren't releasing the name of the agents who are on the raid. <laughs> what was the party for? <laughs> Just to celebrate the arrival of this entertainer. Whose name we don't know. <laughs> Jules, would you like to address this Gambino Sicilian fashion for just a minute? It's, it's, it's really a murky... Uh, I don't know the singer's name. Really. I don't know what's so murky about the uh, difference between the Sicilian faction and the Gambino family. By the Sicilian faction and the Gambino family, what we're talking about are are the Sicilian mafia members that deal almost exclusively in heroin importation and distribution. By the traditional Gambino LCN family, which uh, which uh, with which we all associate John Gotti, we're talking about the traditional LCN. Gambino family that deals in the traditional criminal activities, uh, influencing labor unions, uh, pornography, extortion, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and there is a distinct difference. Uh, uh, I don't know that we should go beyond that. Is this uh, Italian singer someone who's made records? Just how uh, <laughs> <laughs> or compact discs? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you the truth. Had I known that, that this party was going to be for, had we known that this party was going to be for the arrival, specifically for the arrival of this Italian singer, I would have made it a point to find out what his name was. But we didn't realize that uh, that this entertainment was going to be that important, and we uh, we really don't know the singer's name. It, it's it's not someone like was mentioned here, uh, someone that we would all recognize. I, I just don't know what the singer's name was. How many people were in the room all together? Uh, uh, in comparison the, to the, how the many were, were arrested? The, there were over 100 people. Over 100, and yeah. out of that, how many arrested? 10 were arrested. 10, <clears throat> ten of the of the uh, defendants that we were looking for were in the room, and we arrested them on uh, on the spot. Can you tell us how you frustrated the debugging efforts of these guys? That, that's um, something that we don't <laughs> no, we can't. <laughs> 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 All right. <clears throat> Any other questions? Yes, yes sir. Mr. Giuliani, the, the individuals arrested in Italy, will they be charged with violating U.S. laws, and if so, will they be extradited? No. It's my understanding that uh, the individuals arrested in Italy will be charged with violations of Italian law. Um, now, let me just, are there any exceptions to that? Are there any that we, that we will charge? As far as we know, um, they are, they're going to be prosecuted in Italy. The group here is going to be prosecuted in the United States. Sometimes as we uh, continue to move on in these investigations, uh, we, may, we may decide uh, something different, or the Italians might, and then we'll work it out. But at this point, they're going to be prosecuted in Italy, and the group here is going to be prosecuted in the United States. Are there any other Italian operatives here? Resource? 
You, you mentioned that the one, is it uh, narcotics came in one, was it actually inside the bottle? And uh, can you say what kind of... It was, uh, uh, the heroin was liquefied, and it was actually looked like wine in the wine bottles. <laughs> Do you know what uh, these young women who are used as, as mules for this you operation? Sure? Can you do this? Obsessing these arrests, how big a I think that this I think this case has to, has to be seen as part of you know, the cooperative efforts between the Italian government and the United States government. It's a major uh, victory for both. Uh, whenever you arrest and have as many prosecutions and as many opportunities for forfeiture mm -hmm. and the use of the, uh, possibly the use of the racketeering statute and the continuing criminal enterprise statutes, you, you, you deal a pretty heavy blow to these operations. Obviously, this problem is gigantic. It's a very big problem. It is always frustrating when you're asked about any one case. Is, is that case going to end something? Or this is, the, this is going to be a heavy blow against these operations. It comes at a very good time. Uh, hopefully, it will have a real impact. And there are and there are many more investigations and many more cases that all of these people are committed to doing, and that's really the answer. The answer is the overall number of cases and investigations and prosecutions, uh, and that has been very very impressive, and really unprecedented uh, in our history or in the history of Italy. Rudy, labeled the Italian, real real labeled. It was Corvo. Oh, that's what Mr. Bonavolo. <laughs> We have a bottle here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you'd want to drink this, this bottle. Oh, just, Although regular Corvo is very good. Okay, I think it's got to stop. Okay, I'm stopped. Uh, we'll see if we can make it available. <clears throat> One more note on the raids this morning on the, on the cafe. Uh, there were cases of Dom Perignon everywhere. I told the arresting agents I expect to see one of those cases in my office in the near future. <laughs> Thank you very much. Can I, I, I make one point before we uh, finish? Just check with Mr. Bonamonte before we get the 10 letters uh, or more. There is no indication that any wine company such as Corvo or Dom Perignon or whatever is at, at all involved in this uh, operation. So to the extent you use that, please be very careful. It would be unfair to suggest any kind of involvement. It just happened to be what they selected as the way to do it. There's can no you suggestion of any of them. Can you say where they got the... Uh, any, any, any brand names that end up you, you end up finding or seeing here, there's no suggestion that the companies have any complicity or any involvement at all uh, in this. They just happen to have been selected as the vehicle. How are the young women? Uh, this operation is the result of the government information made available by Salvatore Allegra. I can't, I can't answer it from it. That's the information. I have to say no comment on it. I'm sorry? I can't, I cannot identify who uh, was and was not cooperating. I'm saying no comment. He was not a principal, not a key member of this group. Uh, he's a retired New York City police officer living in New Jersey. Really all I know about. The, the, the fact that you got a lot of information from uh, you weren't getting out of that community directly. Is that an indication this has been going on or must have been going on for quite some time that people have to tell us about it? Not necessarily. I think uh, even when these people get out, they do keep up some of their connections and there's a, there's a natural flow of information continuing to them. This is Mr. Fox, but before they go beyond you, can we have the first and last name of the two Italian operatives for present yes, here? Please. Dr. Grateri, G-R-A-T-T-E-R-I. G-R-A-T-T-E-R-I of the and Italian the National name? Police. And the first name? Francisco. 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 Which one is who? Which? <laughs> Francisco. Ah. Dr. Grateri. Francisco. Major De Rosa of the Guardia di Fanonca. Andrea. 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 All right, thank you very much. Andrea. 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 Andrea.